The lifetime of starting from literally poop to gold, if you would have told me that dozens of my friends would become self-made billionaires and that every 48 hours there's a new self-made billionaire, I wouldn't have believed it. Every business is unique. But the ups and downs we experience as we launch and run our businesses are pretty similar. We're Harmon Brothers, the team behind pooping unicorns and other weird but successful video ads you've probably seen. We help businesses grow through unforgettable video marketing, and we're no stranger to tricky situations. In fact, we embrace them. The goal of this podcast is to show how your crappy circumstances could be the golden opportunity that leads to your next success. You're watching Poop to Gold. Welcome back to From Poop to Gold. I'm Benton Crane, your co-host and the CEO of Harmon Brothers. With me on the show today is Jay Samet. Welcome to the show, Jay. Thanks for having me. Now, Jay is, well, he's many things. He's both a very successful entrepreneur and businessman. He's grown several businesses into the seven and eight figure ranges and, and had wild success on that front. But he's also the author of several books. One of them, Disrupt You, which I have watched the TEDx talk on. Jay gives a TEDx talk on Disrupt You, which is basically applying the principles of business disruption to you at a personal level to make sure that you're reinventing yourself on a constant basis. But his most recent book, and I think that's what we're going to talk a little bit more about today, this is super fascinating and I'm excited to get a copy of this. It's called Future Proofing You. And this is where he took some of the concepts that he taught in Disrupt You and he decided to actually go prove them in, in real life because he had a lot of people in the background saying, well, that's all nice in theory, but it, it's really hard in practice. And so, he took a homeless immigrant and coached that homeless immigrant through the process and turned him into a, into a millionaire within 11 months. Did I get that backstory right, Jay? Yeah, but he turned himself into it. I just hold up the mirror. So. That's fair. That's fair. Okay, Jay, tell us a little bit about Future Proofing You and what you're up to today. So I spent five years circumnavigating the globe with Disrupt You, telling everybody, whether by choice or circumstance, every career gets disrupted. I don't yeah. have to make that point anymore post-pandemic. <laughs> That's now proven. But what I also noticed is of a lifetime of starting from literally poop to gold, if you would have told me that dozens of my friends would become self-made billionaires and that every 48 hours there's a new self-made billionaire, I wouldn't have believed it. And yet I've lived it. And I then decided to pay it forward by teaching it at the university level. I've had students do $100 million in a semester. This isn't get rich quick schemes. This isn't, I'm not selling anything here. I'm just filling in the gaps of what we don't teach in school. So with this young man, he did all the work, but he was willing to work harder than most people will for a year in order to live the rest of his life in a manner most people can't. And in a world that's dynamic, that's constantly changing, unless you learn how to become future-proof, you're going to get run over. So I've distilled those mentoring sessions into, into 12 truths, and everyone can do this. It's not easy, but if you follow this, you will be successful. And where can our listeners get a copy of that book? Oh, any, anywhere, Amazon, wherever. Um, you can get it in Audible. It made number one new release in Audible. Yay! Uh, but this is, this is my way to get the information out and, uh, disrupt you is now this year coming out in Polish, Urdu, Icelandic, Italian. It just keeps on. And I've been a CEO. I have run companies to do a hundred billion. I've run companies to do 40 billion. I've started companies from scratch to become, when you're a CEO, your inbox is, I hate you. Here's a fire. We're suing whatever the problem is <laughs> when you help people change themselves. It is the most gratifying thing. And so whatever time I've left, I'm dedicating to trying to teach people how to live the life they want. It's tough when you have a job that doesn't care about you. You don't care about it. You make enough to show up, not enough to care. You're trading your life for something that doesn't give you satisfaction. And if you believe the purpose of life is to live a life of purpose, let me teach you how to achieve those dreams, that they are doable. And Vin's story should be one where everybody can say they're starting, you know, he grew up on welfare. They're starting at least where he is. And you watch it unfold. It, it wasn't easy. 
but it starts with a growth mindset, something I know you believe in. And a funny story, which he didn't find out till he read the book, uh, was in our first meeting, if I knew I needed this guy to go from zero to hero in under a year, I had to get him into a growth mindset instantly. I couldn't let it organically develop. So I lied to him. In our first meeting, I did something called the Pygmalion effect. I told him I interviewed tons of people, and he was the only one that had all the attributes to be a self-made millionaire. So he went along with it, when in fact, he was the only person I interviewed. This study has been repeated at schools where they tell teachers, they test the whole school. These three kids will be super achievers. And at the end of the year, those three kids are the super achievers, but they pick the names out of a hat. If you tell people they're special and you treat them special, they become special. Wow. I'm sitting here hearing that. And as a parent, I'm like, man, what a what a lesson that I should be applying with with my own kids. It it starts as a parent. One of my pet peeves. and, And the reason I started writing this stuff is I hear so many unsuccessful BS gurus shoveling stuff out there. I hate when parents or adults go, what do you want to be when you grow up? Worst question you can ask. It it has no context. What you should be asking is, what problem do you want to solve when you grow up? Mm -hmm. At every age of life, you'll see injustice, things incomplete or whatever. Entrepreneurs don't sell things, they solve things. Squatty Potty wasn't about selling a piece of plastic. It was about solving a problem that people didn't want to talk about or address. If you solve a problem for five people, you have friends. Solve for a million, you make money. Solve for a billion, you change history. And every product you've ever bought, every product you've done a commercial for, any product that we've seen, worn, listened to, watched, was made by a stubborn person. You only (laughs) need two things to be successful, insight and perseverance. Everything else can be hired. Steve Jobs created the first trillion-dollar company couldn't read or write a line of code. But what he had was persistence. And in Future Proofing You, I teach you how to take that persistence and cultivate it into passion. Passion will get you through the hurdles. I love this. And and part of what I love here so much is that you're living what you preach and in that um, your life of purpose goes so far beyond just growing successful companies and yeah. and and making a lot of money it's so much deeper than that it's you want to impact other people's lives through your teachings and so that is what you're dedicating your life to but just to put it in context post pandemic when i saw what happened in our nation's capital in january here's what i saw i saw thousands of people feeling left out left behind fighting over society's leftovers the bottom 140 million americans own less than 1% of the country And yet the top 150 doubled their lifetime wealth during that year. So why are we not teaching this? Why are we not sharing this? Because we all benefit from a strong, stable middle class. And my journey, I didn't set out to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know that you could sit in a room, start something and sell it for a billion dollars. I had two sons when I was very young. I graduated from college. I bought into that get good grades and live happily ever after. And there was a recession, no jobs. So I had no choice but to figure it out. And I've got the scars to prove it. But once I noticed the pattern and that that pattern could be taught, that this is available to anybody in a post-pandemic world where we now know what remote working is, that you don't have to live in a major city in a teeny cramped apartment or in a first world country, You can attain success anywhere because we're one click away from everyone. It's amazing. I started my first company with $1 out of college. I was impressed by this movie you may have heard of called Star Wars. And I thought, what a fun way to make a living. Why don't I do Hollywood special effects? I knew no one in Hollywood, knew nothing about computers or special effects, but that didn't stop me. But I realized that no one was going to hire somebody at 21 to be in charge of their feature film. So I made myself the head of sales for this company that I started with $1 printed business cards. I hustled. You could get George Lucas for a ton of money in ILM, or if you had a lower budget picture. And once I got the work, then you hire people that know how to do it. So you actually won the work before you even had the team to fulfill the work. Of course. So all you need are insight and perseverance. And what I taught Vin was the same thing. One of the 12 truths is fill a void. 
Any job you ever apply for, by definition, means somebody else has done it, which means there's people with more experience, which means you're already on the back foot and life sucks. But if you do something no one else is doing, if you're the only one doing it, by definition, you're the best in the world at it. So Vin wanted to do social media just like everybody else in his generation. But if you're a kid on welfare, you're not going to suddenly get a call from Ford Motor. Hey, would you take over our social media? So I said, look at what's out there. What are people talking about today that they weren't talking about a year ago? And in his year, it was the year that Bitcoin went from 1,000 to 20,000. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking crypto. So I said, okay, make your startup a marketing firm just for crypto. Get that first client, even if you do it for free, because after you have that first client and you kill it for them, you now have what the MBA folks call a case study. And what you'll find out is most people in business are lemmings. They want to be the first to go second. So once they had that case study, the same people that were paying them $500 a month were now paying them $30,000 a month for the same work. And so I've, I hate competition. I hate it with a the passion. There's on any given day, there's somebody smarter than me, better connected than me, richer than me, better looking than me. If I ever meet that guy, I hate him. So I'm always doing the next thing. I may not be the best person at executing that, but if I'm the first one out there, I am the best until I get displaced. So I was the first on the internet, the first video on a computer. I was the first to invent the software that we're using right now, group video chat. And so each one of these things, you move it forward. And I've taken companies from zero to selling them 18 months later for $200 million. And I explain how anyone can do this. It's not that I'm special. I've met the bright people in the world. You know, I've been partnered with, you know, and worked with the Bill Gates and Branson and Musk and Jobs and, you know, on and on. Some of them are the brightest people we ever meet. Some aren't, but they're all stubborn. They're all persistent. Yeah, I, I, I love how you say you can hire everything else, but it's the insight well, and the, persis anyone. the persistence that you can't. I mean, Steve Jobs had no money, but he made up a company called Apple and gave half of it to Wozniak, who was arguably the most informed person on computing in the world at that time. Mm -hmm. So you don't need money. I also go through some of the things that really bug me that the gurus out there tell that are just plain old lies. Like you hear all these guys saying, fear's in your head, fear's not real, you're overcome fear, get rid of fear. B, S, period. We are biologically hardwired to be fearful. You're only sitting here today because your great, great grandfather, Ugg in the cave, saw the saber tooth tiger and ran, okay? <laughs> so that fight or flight, that happens in every meeting, in every social context. It's your first response. But if you're going down the sidewalk, and you hear an 18-wheel semi tooting the horn, the brakes are out, it's going to crush you. Are you thinking about how you're going to look embarrassed or losing money or losing your job? No, you're thinking about life is over, existential death. So you can prioritize fear. So if you're afraid to start a business and you're worried about what people think or what will happen or this or that, think of that other thing that we said about living and giving away your life and having created nothing for your time here. And if you don't believe me, talk to your grandparents or anybody in their old age home and ask them their biggest regret in life. Because it's not what they failed to achieve, it's what they failed to try. And you don't want to have regrets. And when you try something, even if you fail, you don't end up where you started. You either earn or you learn. Either way, you're better. So Bill Gates' first company bankrupt, Henry Ford's first company bankrupt, Walt Disney, go on and on and on. You fail your way forward by learning what does work by making those mistakes. That's right. Before we go back in time and hear about your personal poop to gold journey, tell us, you, you've mentioned several companies uh, that you either started or, or grew to, to, to enormous sizes. Tell us what a couple of those companies are. So Reed Hoffman brought me in and, and we took LinkedIn to the next level. Okay. I created the, the first auction, uh, which you now know as, as eBay. I've worked with uh, Facebook pre-IPO, put the first advertising on it. I, I, a lot of technical stuff. I've also run places like Sony. I just stepped down as independent vice chairman of Deloitte, which is 44 billion a year. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's actually where size. I started my career was, was at Deloitte. So 
Every industry will be changed. Every industry will be disrupted. And a half of all jobs in the U.S. will disappear this decade. So that's wow. why I have a sense of urgency in teaching people this. Everybody can imagine autonomous trucks and there's no more truck drivers, which is the number one most common job on tax returns. But AI systems will replace accountants and audit mm -hmm. and legal and middle management. Anything, when you raise minimum wage, anything that can be automated will be automated. That's right. I went into McDonald's in the 1980s. I noticed that their cash register didn't have numbers on it. It had little pictures, medium shake, big shake. And I said, you know, the average literacy of your customers is higher than the average literacy of your employees. Why not just put a touch screen and let the employees, uh, let the customers do it? And they go, why would we spend that money? Now that we have a higher minimum wage, go to McDonald's today and it's touch screen and an app. And that's so, exactly right. So I've done this again and again and again, and I'm not special. I'm not smarter than the average bear. I, I'm pretty transparent in my books about my foibles and failings. I'm dyslexic, all right? But one out of three CEOs is dyslexic. So maybe it's a superpower in disguise. Wow. So if I can teach people how to find that in them, I don't do the work, they do it. But for some reason, you know, your parents and teachers, your well-wishers wanted to shield you from pain. So they steered you away from doing things. Get that secure job. There are no secure jobs. 100-year-old companies vanish overnight. Mm -hmm. It's the illusion of security that robs ambition. And so why listen to people that gave up on their dreams? Why work for somebody else to make their dreams come true? When do you matter? Don't you want a better life, a better life for your kids and your family? And if it is doable, if it is within your reach, then you have to say, why aren't you doing it? What is stopping you? And so I break it down step by step. There's free workbooks with both of my books. Just go to jsamet.com and you can download them. So you can do the exercise and start mapping out your life that you want to lead. And I'll give you one of the secrets. Solve for others to solve for you. If you realize that entrepreneurs aren't selling things, but solving things, you have a problem. Odds are other people have that same problem. And once you figure out a solution, the rest becomes quite easy. I mean, no one ever went into a hardware store to buy a quarter inch drill bit. What they wanted was a quarter inch hole. They had to buy the drill bit. So. If our world is dynamic, and one of the 12 truths that I share is a new trillion dollar opportunity, by full disclosure, Microsoft and Google are clients. I know, I predict the future accurately because I hang out with the guys that are coding. So if the big guys are focused on the big pieces, they're leaving plenty of crumbs for you to make millions of dollars. Think 10 years ago. Could you live without your iPhone? Mm -mm. Five hours a day, the average person is looking at that screen. Yet 10 years ago when it came out, let me tell you two of the top 10 apps. The Fart app <laughs> and a game with cats, which is another way nobody saw OpenTable, Robinhood, or all the Uber, all the dozens of businesses that changed the world. Well, now That's we're right. not going to have the phone. We're going to have heads-up glasses. The phone stays in the pocket. And you now have heads-up displays that can solve so many more problems. You walk into a supermarket. The doctor told you you have diabetes. Show me all the products that don't have sugar, and everything else will disappear. There's a company starting and doing that. Oh, I parked at the, at the airport a week ago. I don't remember where my car is. Here's a line that takes you to your car. You're going to create those apps. They built the 5G network. They built the edge computing. They built the witchcraft into these lenses, okay? You just have to solve one small problem. And guess what? There's millions and millions of other people that have that same it. problem. Yeah. I love it. All right. So take us back in time, Jay. You've, okay. had, you've had enormous, enormous amounts of success. But before all that success came, take us, to, take us to one of those moments where things got really dark for you. So the darkest moment is so when you're young, at 20, 21 years old, you know everything. You spend the rest of your life getting stupider. So taking you back in that time, because I'm on the wrong side of 50, computer screens were green with blinking white letters. And there was a contract for California was going to get the lottery. And the leading company made a little device with the green screen. You type in the numbers and you see the numbers. And that was going to be their kiosk, okay, for you to buy your own lottery tickets. I, not knowing how to raise money back then, not knowing anything, max out my credit cards and my device 
is a full-size kiosk with a motion detector. You walk by in the supermarket, it goes, Psst, what would you do with a million dollars? It has a touchscreen in eight languages. It has video that shows the rich lifestyle. I mean, it was superior. Now, pause in the story. Unbeknownst to me at that time, but later due to FBI uh, surveillance cameras in a hotel suite, turns out one of the guys on state Senator Alan Robbins took a briefcase of $50,000 cash from my competitor and was awarded. They were awarded the contract. Now, I don't know this at the time. I go up there. I fly up to Sacramento. I know I've got the better machine. Life's going to be great. I'm going to be a gazillionaire. And I didn't get the contract. The other guys did. And I'm crestfallen. I am so broke when I land back at LAX. I put everything into that kiosk. I don't have enough money to take a cab home. And you're in debt. And I'm in debt. And I have two young kids. And my car is going to be repoed. Well, if you've been to LA, we're not known for mass transit. So nobody knows how to take a bus. So back then they used to have little old ladies that man these, these, these booths that would tell you how to get a bus to get to where you're going. I mean, I am, I am as low as I've ever been at that point in my life. And I got home late at night. There's nobody manning those desks. So I'm like, oh man, this is awful. And then it dawns on me, even if those people were there, there's 50 million people go through the airport in a year. They only speak English. We've got people from every corner of the world. And they come 24 hours a day. I got a kiosk that can do that. So next time you get your tickets at the airport, think of me. So, yeah. so the kiosk that you had just built basically became the prototype for that. For doing airports, yeah. So there's always um, another way around. I, I can give you more... And and then disrupt you, I tell a lot of these stories that are just like, you know, back to the wall. But it's just like a video game. You play on that level and there's that immovable obstacle that you just hammer, hammer, hammer. And you say it's impossible until it's not. There's always another way. If you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Jay, thank you so much for sharing all of this wisdom and all of your experience with us. It's been such a pleasure for both me and for our listeners to get to know you better, and I'm excited to get to read your books. I really enjoyed your, your TEDx talk on Disrupt You, and I, I'm really excited to pick up these books and read them. So for our listeners, make sure to grab yourself a copy. They're available anywhere books are sold, it sounds like. Jay Samet, Future Proofing You. All right, so just to wrap up, what one piece of advice would you give to our listeners who right now could be finding themselves in their own poop moment? You have within you the ability to change your circumstances. You, whoever you were yesterday, when you wake up today, you don't have to be that person. And every moment today that you waste thinking about past mistakes is time that you're not spending on building your future, making it happen. I'll close with the story that that I got permission from the woman. I I get emails from readers all over the world. A woman wrote to me because she had quit her job and and started uh, an Airbnb business, put all her money into renting places and Mm -hmm. got got caught in the wrong moment in in time. And uh, she lost all her money and she was in her mid fifties. And so she decided to kill herself. And she called her daughter to tell her that she was killing herself just to say goodbye. And her daughter had a reaction that she didn't expect. Her daughter laughed at her, not in the mean way, but in the, you're going to kill yourself over money? That's the dumbest thing I ever heard of. And her daughter gave her a copy of Disrupt You. And she wrote to me to tell me that it changed her life and she's successful now and happy. And, 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 and you know, she did the change. I mean, I, I've watched miracle after miracle because people believe so. And Tom Bill, you who wrote the forward to future proof and you, he wrote this. And so I'll paraphrase his thought, but I agree. If you're hearing my voice, know this. I truly believe in you. I don't have to know you. I know that you're human and I believe in humans and I know what humans are capable of. And you're no different. You can achieve anything that you put your mind to. So if you can, can, can conceive it, and believe it, you can achieve it. Thank you, Jay. For our listeners, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. 
We'll see you on the next one. Has the marketing for your business plateaued? At Harmon Brothers, we offer a free marketing audit where we can go in and identify areas where you can level up so you can get back into rapid growth. Just go to harmonbrothers.com forward slash audit and you can sign up for a free marketing audit today. Use our team's collective experience to turn your marketing weaknesses into strengths. Check it out. You won't be disappointed.